Now I'm going to demonstrate the Malacat using Ableton Live and I'm going to be controlling two sounds. One is a flute sound and one is a tabla sound. Ableton will record these tracks and let me play over them and notice on the instrument I'm able to control things like pitch brand and vibrato and after the little demo I'll give an explanation of how I'm doing these things. So now I'd like to show you some of the performance features that are on the Malacat itself and how it affects the sound. And after that, we'll get into uh, what's going on on Ableton. Starting with the highest C, when I push that button, it tells Ableton to open up a track, to turn on recording, and start recording everything I do. And it also turns on the transport, and I have a track on there that's playing that, um, that drone. And now from this C up to this B, I have individual notes. And when I hit it hard, I get that other flute sound. And of course, when I hit the sustain pedal, it sustains. It gets interesting now on the left side of the instrument that every one of these notes affects the note that I'm playing. For example... have true. 
tones. So the interesting thing is to try to put combinations of these little gestures. So it gives a whole new expression to the flute sound. So much fun to play on the Malakat. Now on the tabla sound, we have, of course, the individual hits. But the other thing is, if I hold the sustain pedal down, first I'll play the pad without the sustain, and now we'll hold the sustain pedal down. And the speed of that rhythm is controlled by the MIDI clock that is controlled by either the Malakat or controlled by the Ableton. So when you use a sustain pedal, you can use as little or as much of the loop that you want, and you're actually integrating the loop with your playing. This is really a uh, fun instrument. It came from uh, Native Instruments, and the product is called uh, Core Player, which is now a legacy product, by the way. And uh, the uh, actual library itself is called Northern India. But lucky for us, there is a discovery series on Native Instruments, which I shall show in another video. So now let's get into the actual Ableton Live itself. So now let's take a look at Ableton Live itself. We open up the program, and then the first thing we need to do is to go into the preferences and to make sure that your MIDI is set up. In this case, I'm using Loopy one because I would be using the Catalyst, or if I wasn't using another interface, it would show up here. Turn these on. Then you go to the audio. If you don't have an interface, it's going to default to MM Direct X, and you don't want to use that because the latency is absolutely unacceptable. If you have a, another audio card, it would show up here. But if you have neither, you set up ASIO, and you download a free program called ASIO for All, and you notice that the latency is way lower. And it's also affected by the sample rate. The, 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 if I went down to 44.1, it goes down to 10. To 176, it goes down lower. I can even go down as low as 192. But as you do that, you'll notice that you could get crackling because there's too much of a load on the CPU. So you have to find that balance between what sample rate to use and also what buffer. So you notice I have it at 44 one and I'm sitting at 10.9 milliseconds. If I went to the hardware setup and I, let's say, raised the sample rate, see how the latency changed? If I lower the sample rate, the 88 samples. But you don't know when you're going to get the crackling. It depends on your PC. So you try to find the balance between the buffer sample rate and uh, sample rate itself. 44.1 is usually good or 96. 192 is hard unless you have a really fast PC. So once you have that, you need to get an instrument to play on. And these are called VST plugins. And you'll notice I have tons of different ones here. But we're using, in this case, that core player. So you would get it and you would drop it there. And when you drop it and if you click on it, the program actually shows up here. If you click on the wrench, you see all of these different sounds right here. So you'll notice there's buttons here 
each one adds different functionality. The I.O. is important because we need to set up the channels for each of the sounds. So if on the Malacat, you would set up channel one for the tabla, you'd set up channel two for the sitar, etc. And, and then you can control the volume levels and the individual recordings that end up on these cells. This is an example of a recording. And when you click on it, you notice you have access to what it looks like, the velocity levels, the note number that you played, and you saw some of that controlled data information from the example that you just saw. Now, the way you actually do the recording is when you hit this MIDI button, you can assign to each of the cells, for example, this is on channel 5, C4, or on channel 4, C4, etc., that when I play that note on the keyboard, it's as if I'm telling it to record. So watch, I'm going to play, hit the button as if I hit the keyboard, and you notice that it goes red and it starts recording. So anything that I play right now, MIDI data, is being recorded on here. And you put all of your tracks. You can go back again and take a look of that demo, and you'll see as you play the notes, they pop up right here, and they look like this. If you are recording audio, it would be the same thing. But we're doing this for MIDI. And this is really the basic setup for all the stuff uh, that we use. I will show some other examples of using all of these cells as a loop control center in the next video.